everyone. I'm Amberly, and I'm so glad that you decided to practice what we just learned about variables. Good for you. Instant application really is the best way to submit it in our brains. If you need a minute, go ahead and get set up, pause this video, and resume when you're ready. Let's hit the keyboard. So here I am in Visual Studio, and I've already got most of our framework set up with the uh, new project, source code, our main function, libraries. Now, I wanted to wait for you at this stage because there is one thing that you're going to need to know. In our last video, we learned about the different data types of variables, one of which was string. And if you recall, string variables hold text that is at least two characters long. Well, strings are actually kind of a new data type to C++. They were added later on, so in order to use them, we have to include the string library in our program. And because we're professionals and we follow a standard program structure, we're going to put it up here with the rest of our libraries under IO stream. So include, and then again, we put the name of our library that we want to use in here, which is string. All right. Now this is kind of cool, guys. As your skills advance, this list will grow, and it's, it's just cool to see it progress over time. Okay, now that we have our structure set up, the first step for our program is going to be declaring our variables. And remember, this is kind of like RSVPing to a wedding. So we're just telling the compiler ahead of time, like, hey, heads up, I'm going to need seats, or in this case, memory locations, for all these pieces of information, and these are the names that they're going to go by. Okay, so I'm going to put these right here. And since we know the values for our variables, we can go ahead and initialize them right here. So patient age, 35, and we do that just by setting these equal to whatever that value is. Now, as I said earlier, when you get to the string, a value, you need to encompass that in double quotes. Okay, so that's how we add the value for a string. Now, in the case of a char or a character variable, that is only initialized using a single quote. Okay, and remember a char is just one value, whereas a string is at least two. So I use that as a little trick to remember it. So char, single quotes around the value, because it's a single character. String has to be at least two characters, so its values always get double quotes. Now, this is a good time to mention that by initializing our variables right here, by giving them their values, we have actually committed like a felony grade programming crime known as hard coding. And the reason hard coding is bad is because it essentially makes the assumption that the values of these variables are not going to be changing. Like by saying the patient's name is equal to Patrick, I have essentially said that all of our patients are going to be named Patrick, which obviously is not the case, right? It's really, I mean, that's the whole point of variables, right, is for their value to, like, vary. That's how they got the name. So whenever possible, it is best to initialize variables with input directly from the user. Right now, since we're learning and this is just a practice exercise, this will be fine. So we're going to come back to hard coding in just a bit. Okay, so we've declared our variables, and we've initialized them with values. What is the third way that we can interact with a variable? What was that term? Calling. We can call variables, but when do we call them? At 2 a.m. after a couple drinks? No, definitely not. We call a variable anytime we need to gain access to its value, either to print it to the console or maybe for a calculation and a math formula. But how do we actually do it? Well, the same way you'd call a friend, by name. So why don't we call these variables by adding a nice little output message, you know, outputting it to the console for our patient, just something nice like, hey, welcome, you're checked in, you know, we have your name and this is all your information, have a seat. So I'm going to go ahead and type that up for us here. So we need our see out statement because we're printing to the console, right? And then we need some literal text here for kind of that intro, right? So I want to say thank you, Patrick, for checking in. I have my literal text here, but I don't want to just type Patrick like this. We want to call the variable because, you know, again, if we had not hard-coded this in the case that it's a different name, if we were to type Patrick in our literal text, it would always print that out. So I'm going to leave it here, and then we're going to change commands with our carrots. And now I type in the name of the variable that I want to call. Okay, 
and then some more gears because we're going to kind of shift back to our literal text here. Okay. And now I'm just going to continue on and kind of show Patrick his information. That way he knows that we have it correctly. And notice, guys, how I'm putting a space here. And that's because when our variable calls this Patrick, if I had not put this space here, it's just going to be like, thank you, comma, Patrick, smashed right up against there. Because this will print literally whatever we put in here. So I'm going to code those spaces in that way as well. So we have confirmed your age as oh, patient age. Okay, switching back, literal text. And then we need that space to kind of continue. Okay, space, carrots to change commands, another variable call now. And see how Visual Studio is trying to help me out here. If I press my up and down arrow, I can go through these and I'm gonna press tab to kind of auto complete this here for me. Okay, awesome. So that was kind of like one long sentence, right? We've got our command, we're using our carrots to kind of toggle back and forth between our variable calls and our literal text. And then we end it with our semicolon because that's the end of our, our entire statement here. So just to review real quick before we run this, we declared our variables here. We initialize them by hard coding their values, and we called them here in our cout statement. Okay, let's run this baby. Okay, and here's our console, and we can see here's our message. This is our cout st statement. So thank you, Patrick. We've confirmed your age. This is our variable, patient age, patient weight. If we kind of look at this side by side here, Okay, we can see how that's happening. So we have our cout statement, thank you, space. There's that space we coded. Here's our call, patient name, and then we continue through. So this is how it blends the literal text in calling our variable. So even though we're referencing it by name, when we're seeing it on this side, we're seeing its value. If you've ever looked into programming jobs, you may have seen terms like front end and back end. Well, the back end is what the programmer is working with, and the front end is what the user is working with. For us, our code in Visual Studio is the back end, and the console window represents the front end. This cube and this card is a good representation visually of how variables have those two sides. So on one side, we see the, the value of the variable. This is what the user is seeing, the front end. And then on the back end, we have the actual variable name, and that's what we're dealing with. The user should never have to deal with anything from the back end. Speaking of users, what about that next patient we talked about? Now, let's say that Patrick is bringing his daughter Mary to the doctor as well, okay? We've kind of set ourselves up here by hard coding these values. Mary is probably not, you know, gonna have the same information, right? So do we need to like declare entirely new variables or should we change this to Mary? Like how would we fit in Patrick? You know, what's our plan here? Well, if initializing means to give value to a variable, and we did that here and we hard coded this, but I also mentioned that the whole point of variables is for their value to vary, right? So the beautiful thing here is we're gonna take this and I'm just gonna copy it and paste it, and we can just reinitialize these variables with new values. Okay, so to reinitialize these variables, all we need to do is update their values. But before we do that, I wanna point out one thing. Right now we have here a declaration and initialization. We've already declared our variable, so that memory space has already been set aside for them. Guys, declaration only needs to happen once at the beginning of your program. When you're just reinitializing a variable, giving it that updated information, that new value, you don't need to put the data type. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Okay, 
And so now we just have our variable names and then we need to put in their new values. Okay, excellent. So when we're up here at this line, patient age is equal to 35. When we get down here, patient age will be equal to four. Now, I wanted to display the same message to Mary as I did for Patrick. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this whole statement here, and I'm gonna copy and paste it right beneath our new initialization. Now, do you know why I put it down here? Like, why couldn't I just put it right after this or, or just use this same thing, right? It's because our compiler runs line by line, top to bottom. So it's going to start here and then here and work its way down. When it gets to this statement, the values for these variables have Patrick's information. So this will execute. It's going to finish. It's going to come down here. It's going to run line 17, 18, and 19. And then when it runs this statement here, patient name is now going to be equal to Mary, whereas previously it was Patrick. Pretty cool, right? Now one more thing to think about before we run this is we saw earlier that I kind of had to code these spaces in, right, for it to look good with our, our values. That also goes for new paragraphs and moving things down to other lines. So this is going to run and then I want a little bit of space before I get to this one. So I am going to give us some new lines and that is going to be a cout command too. So this will be cout, my carrots to kind of change statements there. And then we're going to use indel, which is one line. And I want it to be down two lines. So I'm going to add a second one. OK, perfect. Let's run this baby. Excellent. Very nice. So here on our first block, we have this see out statement with Patrick's information. And then here between the space is where our initializations are happening with our variables with Mary's information. So by the second time this ran, it has that new value. If we take a look at it here side by side, we can kind of see that happening, right? Isn't that cool, guys? I hope you're able to follow along with me in this lesson and get some practical experience declaring, initializing, and calling variables in C++. If you'd like to continue to take your skills to the next level, stick around for the third and final variable video where I'll be showing you how to initialize variables with information collected directly from the user themselves rather than hard coding it like we did. Great job today, everyone. And remember, your ideas are one of a kind and worth building. Go get it, Tiger. See you next time. <laughs>